Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. I'm welcome to another compelling, important program about the issues of our time. We kick off the program with Christine Farrow Saxon, Executive Director of Family Service League and also of Save of Essex County. Good to see you, Christine. Great. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. SAVE stands for? Sexual Assault and Violence Education Program. Let's talk about it directly. What is it and why does it matter um, as we move into the spring season of 2021 post-COVID a year plus in? So we are the designated sexual violence program for Essex County. Every county in New Jersey has a sexual violence program. So there's 21 and Rutgers University. So we provide an emergency hotline um, that is 24 seven. Hold we on one provide... second, can we put up the hotline as you speak? Could you say what it is? It's 1-877-733-2273. What happens when people call that hotline? So we actually have the hotline in both Spanish and English. So someone who is looking for information about sexual assault services in our county is looking to get some emotional support from somebody right in the moment. So they are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, our advocates via these hotlines. Um, with that also, we also go to the hospitals, um, emergency departments, as well as to the police departments to help through the evidence collection process and all of the reporting when somebody is sexually assaulted. You know, COVID has impacted every aspect of our life. As we're doing this program at the end of March, again, be seen later, what would you say the greatest impact of COVID has been on those who are victims of um, violence and sexual assault? So one of the greatest impact has been that people are afraid to get help. Uh, they don't want to go to the hospitals. They don't want to go to the police departments out of fear of contracting COVID. Um, we've also, people are quarantined at home with their abusers. There's been high levels of domestic violence occurring and the sexual assaults that occur within the context of the domestic violence relationship. So people are at home with their abusers and they cannot really access the help they need. Um, so that's been a challenge to provide these services during the pandemic to convince people that these services are available. You know, when we talk about counseling and your organization provides counseling, right? Yes. What would you say, particularly with victims of violence, sexual assault, people dealing with real serious mental health issues, from your perspective, the difference between virtual counseling and in-person counseling? So there is a big difference. So since June, we've been providing in-person counseling services. We felt June of very 2020. June of 2020, um, we felt very, very strongly about allowing people to come back to the office to be able to meet directly with the counselor in a private confidential space. Because a lot of our clients also don't have access to reliable internet, they don't have privacy, and people just don't prioritize their mental health, especially now during the pandemic. They're worrying about childcare issues, they're worrying about financial stressors. So clients that come to our organization, if they've been sexually assaulted, they, didn't, they do not pay for services. Our counseling services, which we provide, that is not just for sexual violence, we see all types of people presenting with various issues. Um, we don't turn anyone away because they can't pay for treatment. So we really, really wanted to make sure that people could get to us and have access to a counselor in a private confidential space. You know, interesting question about mental health, COVID and mental health. And there is some coverage around this and we need to do more and to, to understand it more because the health, the clinical, the medical, um, problems are so severe, particularly for those so-called so long haulers. What would be the message you want to send right now, Christine, to those watching who are either struggling themselves, um, disproportionately struggling with depression, anxiety, whatever it is they're, they're dealing with themselves, or a family member or a friend who cares deeply about someone who is struggling more than they would normally struggle because of COVID this far in a year plus? What would be your message directly? I think my message would be that you're not alone. I think people often feel as if it's just them having these experiences or that they could tough it out themselves um, or that they should just have to hold on to this pain alone. 
but that is not the case. We are here to help. We are here, our counselors are trained. We provide counseling in 12 different languages. Um, so we are able to provide counseling services to people who need it. We also emphasize the importance of including family members in treatment. So it's important that you could bring your husband, you could bring your children, you could bring your grandmother, whoever is struggling with this, into our counseling rooms and really work on how this is, the COVID pandemic has impacted the family. It's important that people follow up. You saw the hotline. This will be one of many organizations that we profile who are making a difference in the community. Reach out. The hotline, we'll put it up one more time as we speak right now. And Christine Farrow Saxon, who is Executive Director of Family Service League and also SAVE of Essex County, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Holy Name Medical Center, Caldwell University, PNC, Grow Up Great, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, New Jersey Sharing Network, Summit Health, PSENG, and by Newark Board of Education. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network. Data shows that many patients have avoided seeking critical health care in the wake of COVID-19 for fear of contracting the virus. Delaying medical care can have serious consequences, so you should never second guess or ignore your symptoms. At Holy Name Medical Center, we have measures in place to prevent infectious disease from spreading. We're clean, we're open, and we're safe for all your healthcare needs.